What do you do when you run an events-based business and a global pandemic hits? We find out on this episode of Tripod. You're listening to Tripod, the tricycle creative podcast produced for anyone interested in being a better digital and content marketer. Host Ross Erosion is a marketing coach, content creator, and entrepreneur who brings you helpful tips, social media updates, inspiring interviews, and his own unique perspective on how to tell your story and grow your business. So sit back, relax, and let's get pedaling. Recently, I sat down with David J. Neff, co-founder of the Weird Homes Tour, over on our YouTube channel for a video series called Three Big Questions. And in doing that, we touched on something really interesting that I wanted to bring to you, my podcast listening audience. David talks all about how he's been pivoting and adapting and evolving and scratching and crawling for his events-based business Weird Homes Tour during COVID-19. I wanted to bring it here to share it with you so that you can hear what he's been doing and hopefully it can inform what you might be doing or what you can do if you are an events-based business. So sit back and enjoy. Hey, everybody. Howdy. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, we'll have to, uh, I'll have to quiz you on uh, why I helped you move to Austin You later. were just one of the or, good people. We yeah. talked about this a little bit on the pod, a little bit on the podcast, but... I talk to whenever you move to a place sight unseen and like you reach out, like, does anyone know anyone that lives there? And you talk to those people when they're like really this nice, guy. you're like, Oh, okay. That, that helps. That really helps. So you were one of the, you were one of the, you were one of the nice ones. So good guy. I'm, I'm happy to play unofficial ambassador to, <laughs> to Austin or anyone, anyone who's interested one day when I run for city council, I'll remember, just vote for, for me. sure, for sure. So why don't we, before we get into our three big questions, why don't you tell uh, the folks at home a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. Hey, everybody. So David J. Neff, um, uh, at Dave I am on Twitter, and also Weird Homes Tour on, on Twitter and Instagram and basically any platform you can imagine. But I am the CEO and co-founder of the Weird Homes Tour. And uh, we've been doing that for about seven years now. And what it is, is a nationwide arts uh, and kind of architecture tour of some of the strangest places and people uh, that exist in the United States. And we do that in a bunch of different cities. And we take a percentage of all of our profits and actually donate that back to uh, nonprofits that are working around affordable housing. Because affordable housing is just a huge problem and and thing people uh should be helping and concerned about all across the united states as i'm sure a lot of you uh have experienced yourselves so that's the weird homes tour yeah it's um it it it, it can be found online we're gonna obviously i have some of the information down below but there'll be some some ways you can connect with david later on in the show for sure so now that you've know a little bit about him, I think that's as uh, perfect a time, if you will, to jump right in to the first big question. Let's do it. All right. So what are you working on right now? Never oh, has there yeah. been a more loaded question with COVID. No, no <laughs> a lot of things as always, but uh, you know, no big deal. Just pivoting my entire business model. <laughs> Uh, uh, during the coronavirus so, so you know nice and easy i sleep great at night Who i'm not doesn't? stressed or worried at all um uh, so what we've done is everybody watching and as you know uh, we have physical tours of interesting architectural homes collectors oddities um people who love uh, to collect every happy meal toy that has ever existed from mcdonald's since 1982 uh, and they have an entire room about that, right? And people buy a ticket, they get a map, they get a wristband, they go on these tours. And so our entire business model, much like restaurants and salons, uh, museums, uh, has just been absolutely upended. And so what we're really working on is like, great, if we're in an environment where we can only do that you know, and maybe one or two of the cities, or we have to keep pushing it out, or local public health officials say it's safe. A week later, it's not safe. Two weeks later, it is safe. Well, do people feel safe, right? What is the actual community of people? We've just been trying to pivot 
and change that business model so we can survive. So as someone who's been working that, as I'm sure, and I kind of say hope, but maybe I don't want that to be misinterpreted. I've talked a lot on some of these shows just about that, you know, if you're just sitting back and waiting for business to just get totally back to normal, I don't know if and when that's going to happen. So at least not for a while. And even then it may never look the same. So my question is, um, what's that process been like for you? I mean, what, are there any kind of like struggles or learnings or, you know, what, what's, what has that been like for you? Yeah, it's interesting. I talk to people, uh, in grocery. I talk to people who are in fuels and like convenience stores, just a lot of like small business friends and, and people who work at big businesses. And, you know, we, we think the world's going to take a long time to get back to normal. I think people are now doing curbside at grocery and, uh, you know, my mom and dad, uh, your mom uh, learning Instagram is now like, I guess I have to download an app and schedule a time to pick up my groceries at HEB or Kroger or Albertsons. And you can imagine millions of people are doing that. And so uh, I think there's a wholesale push for everyone to be more digitally connected. I think that's staying. I think that like the average guest of our tour um, uh, is two demographics, right? And you've seen this data. It's like 50 plus, And then it's like 25 to 40. And the 50 plus uh, are like, oh, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to your website, but I had a question, right, um, on how to buy this ticket or what that looks like. And not all of them, of course, just like generalizations here. But now they're having to do that for grocery. Now they're having like have their card activated because they don't want to touch the gas pump. And they do the near field communication, NFC, right? Or they do Apple Pay, which is the same type of mechanism because people are worried about touching That's things. an interesting thought because, so, uh, you know, I, I guess I had thought about that, but now that you've mentioned that, it, it kind of brings me to like this semi-forced uh, learning and adapting of technology, right? So That's part right. of my Instagram 101 was, yeah, my mom had interest in Instagram and I actually did, I spent three weeks with her and I did the exact wor- the exact marketing uh, course that I'm now offering. And I actually have a video coming out with that next week. So I actually videoed that, that process of me with my mom to that, that piece. But I also spent some time teaching my dad how to use Zoom, which, right. which you know, right. so anyways, I bring this up because it's like, you know, not just thinking about, oh, I have to move my business there. Well, let's be, let's talk about this. Is the audience, are your customers now going to be more likely to live in those, to, to, to access you, to, to interact with you, to Correct. be on those places because they've become so I maybe used to, or they become familiar with using Zoom now using, you know, those, again, the, the NFC, the, whatever the case may be using technology tools that they weren't using before. It's a, I believe it's a wholesale shift in human behavior, uh, especially for, let's say for the boomers, um, uh, you know, maybe for generation X a little bit, right. Y and Z are fine. Um, and they get it, but it is just a wholesale shift in human behavior. And so I, I think that you and I are used to ordering something on Amazon. It comes, it's fine. Um, but even I'm like, okay, if I want groceries, I guess I'm downloading this app, which is not great, by the way, <laughs> yeah. and scheduling time on sure. curbside. Yep. And the company is now saying like, oh, crap, yeah, we haven't had to invest in curbside yeah. or grocery pickup or Uber Eats or Instacart. We thought that was over here. And now it's here affecting all the people and people actually don't want to come and walk inside. Or conversely, looking at the entire supply chain, right? Not only that, like maybe in this case, the the grocery store, but let's also talk about the restaurant, right? The restaurant who maybe wasn't as invested, if you will, in uh, delivery or takeout or Grubhub or, or, you know, paying that fee to, you know, like those kinds of things that all of a sudden has become you know, uh, a, a necessity. And I think maybe a lifeline yeah. in some of those cases, you know, it's been a shame living in a city in Austin, Texas, where we have so many, it's such a food city, food centric city. Yeah. 
And totally. to see every week the restaurants that are closing down, it, it is, Correct. it's sad. It's, it, it is, it is. And, uh, you know, I feel that there's a wholesale change in human behavior and those restaurants, restaurants are the laggards on everything, right? Restaurants are like the last people totally. to have a website, the last people to be on social media. Yep. They're like just now starting a YouTube channel so you can like cook yep. at home. And now all of a sudden they just got punched in the face, right? And and are like, oh my God, you know what? We should have our chef and we should have uh, takeout meals and we could probably charge a little bit more. And I, I know I paid a little bit more for uh, uh, my wife to have a little Mother's Day yep. gift, uh, like some tacos she loves from Suerte. Mm -hmm. And I went online. I, I might also it. go out on a limb and say you, you've 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 been very contributory to Suerte. I've been seeing the grams. Yes. I see all the. Uh, you. Yeah. I, I know mean, what she, I, mean, I know what Shelly likes I, now. I, I know. Right now, where's my loyalty yeah, card? Yeah, right. Hey, Suerte, heads up. Uh, and and so for them, especially. Uh, Again, you know, hey, I, I'm happy to be a paid influencer if you're watching Suerte, <laughs> let me know. Uh, is that we go, we show up, we pop the trunk, they put it in the trunk, they hand you your bill through the window, no contact, touchless, right? And there's this idea of touchless commerce. There's this idea of contactless commerce. And not just like how you and, and I would like pay for a bill, but like how we dip our phone to pay, yeah. which is obviously everywhere but the United uh -huh. States. And then, you know, I, I think people are just also going to think more about safety and cleanliness um, using those online tools and those restaurants that are getting crushed because they haven't invested in any of that. And the same for grocery yeah. stores. And they're all investing. And that's what we're doing now, too, is like, trust me, we've invested a lot as a home tour in online, our presence, the social media beast that people like you help us feed and understand. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're like, doubling down on that the, the, you know and trying to figure out like we need to survive by continuing to have physical events yeah. and people still come yeah. out but like how do you build on top and of i that? would also say i brought up before that now is as good a time as any to actually attempt to build out your business in a different way through potential partnerships right like you know the stronger you know you're you're kind you know the there there's some metaphor there which escapes me but there's some <sighs> Bible limerick. I don't know. There's something here about together. We're better than alone. Sure. sure. About, hard hold on, let me, let me, hold on, let me drink some more coffee. There's like an ancient Chinese proverb there. Okay. I got uh, it. Actually, I got it. Okay. The six samurai brothers, they're each given a stick and their father says, try to break the stick and they'll go, Oh, that's so easy. But then you put the six sticks together, David, they put them in and now try Oh, they couldn't do it. There you go. You're there welcome. You go. I got did someone it. Someone chat that to you or did you I, just think? I it? thought of that. <laughs> it's in the Phil Jackson book, the, the 11 rings, which I recommend. We're not talking about that, but uh, you actually have a partnership. I don't know if, yeah. if you yeah, so, are allowed to, or want to share it here, but talk a little bit about that. Yeah. 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 So um, we've always had a great partnership with the modern home tour. Uh, the Modern Home Tour uh, has been great partners. Uh, it's MADS now, uh, which is Modern Architecture and Design. Um, uh, so if you guys just Google Modern Home Tour, they're in a ton of cities. We're in a ton of cities. We're actually probably the only two national home tours that exist in the United States, which is crazy to think mm -hmm. about. And so we just partnered together to do a guest comfort survey. Wow. Right? We designed like a 10-question survey to gather all this data and see what people expect in the new world. And we're still getting all that data back and figuring out, are we releasing it? Are we doing a press release? Are we like, you know, gonna, uh, what does that look like? And we just talked to people who bought tickets in the past, hmm. right? Yeah. So very focused on an existing set of customers, not random guy named Frank, <laughs> who's on our Twitter account. Sure. Uh, no offense, Frank. I know you're watching. <laughs> you're typing in an angry note to me right now. Just send it my way. <gasps> um, I'm like, Frank. There's a big difference. Exactly. He's writing a letter. Uh, there's a big difference. Uh, mail it to Ross. No. He lives no. Uh, there's, a, there's a big difference between that general audience and the people who actually have uh, behavior and intent to purchase a ticket in the past and buy a new ticket. Yeah. So that's one thing. We're doing that kind of together. And then the other one, which I'm very excited, uh, exclusive uh, to this for sure, because uh, I haven't talked to anyone else about it, is we're doing a 
partnership with Atlas Obscura. Ooh. So, uh, Ross, have you heard of Atlas Obscura in the past? I have, but I, I listen, Feet to Fire, I don't know if I could, like, put my finger on exactly what they do. Yeah. Uh, I've hey, heard me... the name. I know the brand, but full disclosure, I don't know exactly what they do. So Atlas Obscura has a, as an online community of about 1.3 million people um, who've built this collaborative, beautiful, amazing web community hmm. um, where people share interesting and wild and inspiring things from all over the planet. So you can imagine you go to Atlas Obscura, you type in Bulgaria, sure. and Which someone has crowd course, as as one does, sure. uh, Wakanda, <laughs> Latvia, whatever. Sure. Type it in. Yep. Uh, Fifty recommendations of what to go do in that country, and oh. not like go visit the National Museum. It's yeah. more like, hey, did you know that the uh, the only medical cadaver museum in the world? is in the capital of Bulgaria and it's amazing and kitschy and interesting. And if you're a doctor, you'll appreciate it, but a normal person could go there and appreciate it too. Right. And they curate all that and they have one thing. They came out with a book that's like a best selling book on Amazon and the wall street journal and the New York times a couple years ago. And people actually plan their vacations with this book. Like going through these no, that fascinating. Makes sense. I always like the off the beaten passive. I am a UNESCO guy. Right. That's I right. love a good yeah. UNESCO site. You know, I'd love by the end of my life to have visited many, 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 many UNESCO sites. Um, so I and, can appreciate and, there may, that may be part of it, but I'm sure there's yeah. other stuff that's off the beaten path. That's right. And and they reached out to us probably, I don't know, four or five months ago. And we started talking about what a partnership would look like. How could we do Weird Homes Tour, yeah. Atlas Obscura collaboration, um, you know, Kanye Adidas. Maybe we're not there yet in the collaborations, <laughs> but like we're working our way there. Sure. Uh, and just said in physical events, could we run tours in New York every weekend? Mm -hmm. Could we do something in New Orleans twice a month with an actual guide taking you to these different home tours? And then boom. COVID-19 hit oh, uh, and, sure. and sat down and had a great conversation with them to be like, okay, you know what? We're going to start with online. And so Brandon Hodge, who's amazing. Oh, I know, know Mr. Know, Brandon Hodge. You know, you know, Brandon. I do. Um, you should do three questions with Brandon and I'm sure they would be Whew. fascinating. I got to come up uh, with three new questions for him. I'm not going to yeah, go exactly. with the normal ones. And, and uh, he'll be our first one where you will buy a ticket on the Weird Homes Tour website or Atlas Obscura's website, and you'll get a link to a Zoom, and you'll spend an hour with Brandon as he goes through his collection oh, of cool. spiritualism items. He's Ouija got cool stuff. He's got cool stuff. Walkers, haunted objects from the 1890s. Yeah, he's got amazing, cool stuff, man. Amazing stuff. Yeah. And, and we're going to just keep that up until we get back to normal. I love that and because let me tell you, as someone, I like the off the beaten path stuff. I think some of my, or no, I know some of my favorite vacation things have been smaller too. Not only just, they don't necessarily have to be like totally bizarre, but just smaller. Like for example, we went to Scotland and we did like a small bus tour, you know, it was like eight yeah. people. Like, I, I, and, 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 you know, you kind of leave from the same bus depot with the big buses. And I know we were able to go to places that other others weren't. And, and, you know, I like that experience a lot. And there's nothing worse than doing like a search and like going to like TripAdvisor and being like, oh, top 10 places to visit in, in Edinburgh, the Bennigans. It's like, I don't, yeah, what, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing to me here? You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm it's the worst trip advisor will make me want to throw my computer out the window sometimes with that where it's like top 10 places and it's like applebee's okay and then the putt putt golf course and i'm like what what is yeah. this like this is no. so lame thanks for listening to tripod be sure to subscribe and rate the show on apple podcasts google podcasts spotify pandora stitcher or wherever you listen Show notes can be found at tripodpodcast.com. Connect with Tricycle Creative on social media at Hello Tricycle and learn more about how we can help you with your marketing at tricycle-creative.com.